My name is Emily Stark. I'm a senior. Um, I major in math with a concentration in statistics and a minor in psychology. I'm originally from Wake Forest, North Carolina, and so far I've been involved with a international study abroad program, um, an internship this past summer, and the Presidential Research Scholars Program, which allows undergraduates to conduct research. Uh, this past summer I was involved with an internship in Washington, D.C. It was with the Virginia Tech Biocomplexity Institute with their Social and Decision Analytics Laboratory. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it was a great experience. It was 10 weeks. The, the internship was called Data Science for the Public Good, where we used um, data science, so a lot of statistical computation using R, um, in order to analyze questions that um, are directly tied to policy. So, so I was part of um, the Budapest Semesters in Mathematics program. I studied there one summer semester for 10 weeks. Um, I took two advanced math classes alongside students from Harvard, from Berkeley, Stanford, Princeton, etc. I was awarded a Presidential Research Scholars position, um, so the university um, gave me funding to conduct my own undergraduate level research. Um, I presented that research at two national conferences as well as the research forum here at Austin P. When I was awarded the Presidential Research Scholars position, there I knew that I wanted to research game theory. I'd had a little bit of coursework before from a different institution um, in the field, but also he doesn't have a game theorist. At best, I think we have a decision scientist somewhere in the business school. And so I knew that that was something that I wanted to explore. I really thought that I had a passion for game theory, and I did, um, but there really wasn't a way that I could do that with the traditional coursework. And so I talked to the department chair in the math um, department, and I talked to Dr. Menzer, who at that time was my academic advisor, and I said, this is something that I really want to do, and you know, they were just all over it. And so um, I applied, I got the position, and Dr. Menzer and I enrolled in a game theory class online. I have about three or four different textbooks on the subject, trying to muddle my way through it. And I was really able to supplement the traditional coursework that I had at Austin P, my, my regular math classes that we offer, with this new and exciting field that I wasn't, um, I didn't have access to beforehand. And so it was a great way for me to take ownership of my education because not only was I learning what you know, Austin P told me to learn, but I was able to to expand that to what I I really wanted to explore. Um, and so I was able to conduct research for one whole academic school year. Um, I presented it at two conferences, um, one the undergraduate conference for women in math, and then the other one was the national conference on undergraduate research, as well as here in-house. Um, so that was a really fun opportunity to, to do something a little different, a little outside of what Austin P regularly offers. Um, as far as you know, the best parts about my study abroad program, um, what I learned there was Yes, I came in as, you know, just the student from Austin P. I was there, my roommate was from Harvard, um, people were from Berkeley, Princeton, Stanford, Georgia Tech, etc. Um, and so there was a little, I was intimidated at first, by the end of it I was just one of them. And so that proved to me that I was learning what I needed to learn here at Austin P. And that I was able to think on the level that they were. And so it was reassuring because, you know, I, I was able to validate my own college education but I also realized I was keeping up with some of the best math students in um, in the nation, more or less. Those, you know, it's a, a competitive program, and so I was able to not only keep up with them, but we were all able to work together um, and, and utilize our different strengths and weaknesses and take on different parts of um, of the class. So we were able to work together to really achieve a lot that summer. And I was also able to make lifelong friendships with other women in the field. Um, Austin P doesn't have a whole lot of women in the math department. And so it was really nice to be able to sit there and talk with, um, with women who thought very similarly to I. Um, and so, you know, I'm still in constant communication with those, those three other girls. Um, we've seen each other already once, once after a year out. Um, and, you know, we're going to be part of each other's lives, I think, for, for the rest of our lives. Um, as far as the internship, I, was, um, I actually discovered a new field. Um, so week one, I didn't know what this field, connectionist psychology, was. I didn't know what it did or what it studied. Um, by week 10, I decided to go to grad school for it, um, which was kind of a weird turn of events, but I'm, I'm glad that I had the experience because now I found a really, um, a really 
interesting way to marry my skills and statistics with my passion of psychology um, and a little bit of graph theory, which is another another mathematical field. Um, and so now, you know, I went from thinking I'd probably do some graduate work for statistics to being able to really get excited about programs that I'm applying to, um, where I know that it's not just going to be a statistics PhD or just going to be a psychology PhD. It's going to be something that really works with what I like to study. My advice to all incoming freshmen at Austin P and anywhere else is to throw caution to the wind. Um, get, you know, unreasonably passionate about whatever field that you can as quickly as possible because you're going to find out either you really are passionate about that field or maybe you're not. Um, so I came in as a pre-med major and that lasted about three weeks because I don't really like chemistry. Um, so then, you know, the next week I was like, maybe I'm a physics major. And so I was really passionate about physics for about 48 hours before I realized I didn't really like physics either. And then, you know, I tried engineering. There was one point I think I was like an ancient studies major. Um, I'm not any of those now, but not only was I able to, to figure out what I, what I liked or not, I still have relationships with those professors. So, you know, the, the classical studies um, professor that I had, you know, he was willing to take me, um, you know, on an excavation in Greece if, if that was what I wanted to pursue. And I was just, you know, a freshman that he had in his class. So not only did you get to try on a whole bunch of different hats, but you also develop these, these deeper relationships with your professors, which, I mean, that'll help you when you have to get letters of recommendation and stuff, but really it's going to help you figure out what you like to do. Um, it's really easy to be passionate about something when your professor is passionate. Um, you know, there are some professors here at Austin P that I'm glad I had when I was a junior because if I had them when I was a freshman, I might have ended up a different major um, and I probably wouldn't have been as happy with it because they were so passionate and it's easy to share a passion. And so create that not, not only for you and your professor, but for you and your friends um, because then you're not going to school because you have to. Um, you're there because you're really, really excited to learn about connectionist psychology or ancient Greek philosophy or, you know, the sentence structure, grammar, whatever English major is study. Um, so try on a bunch of different hats. This is, you're an undergrad. This is what that part's all about is to figure out what excites you and gets you out of bed in the morning.